The business rules shape serves as a powerful alternative to the decision shape because it can store multiple rules and conditions into one catch-all container. In this example, we have six decision shapes that form the logic for the process, making the process flow difficult to follow. We can take those six decision shapes and combine their logic into one business rules shape, and that makes it easier to follow the process flow. The business rules shape accepts or rejects a document based on defined conditions within the profile component. Within the business rules properties dialog, conditions reference inputs such as profile fields, static values, or functions. The conditions evaluated compare profile fields, static values, or functions that are defined above. Inputs can be added as field or function values and conditionally compare the values statically or to each other. The business rule shape takes advantage of conjunction and disjunction operators, which can be applied for compound logic implementation. For example, a complex statement can be configured using a conjunction and followed by two disjunctions or. If a repeating profile element is used as an input, the business rules shape executes its rules for each repetition of that element. For example, in this XML profile, notice the repeating contact element, which is reflected by the maximum occurs being set to unbounded in the data elements tab. Let's assume we're evaluating both the email and the last name fields, both of which are child elements of the looping contact parent element. This business rule would execute the number of times the looping elements exist in the incoming XML document. In this case, it would execute two times. So if one repeating element fails, the entire document fails. How could we address this issue? To handle this better, we use the data process shape to split the documents and then analyze specific elements independently. Let's assume we split the documents using contact as the split element. We now have two documents, each containing separate contact details. If one of the contact elements fails the business rule, then only the document representing that particular contact will be rejected and the other document will be accepted. Notice how the business rules rejected path flows to an exception shape in our example. Within the exception shapes properties window, error messages can easily be configured. A parameter can then be bound to an built-in business rules results message document property. Let's review the business rules shape workflow. Business rules are executed in the order that they're organized in the rules list. In this example, we have a rule is email empty before the valid accounts rule. So that rule is email empty would execute to completion first. Within each rule, inputs are calculated fields are gathered, and functions are executed. Conditions are executed, and results are labeled as true or false. Error messages for false results are aggregated. The source document is processed down the appropriate path, and 
if the document is rejected, an error message XML is attached as a business rules result message document property. Let's take a moment and recap how business rules differs from a decision shape. The business rules shape offers a powerful decision-making logic, so why have a decision shape at all? Well, often the decision shape is quicker and more efficient to use, and it uses fewer system resources. The business rules shape is available in professional and enterprise editions, and the decision shape is available in standard editions. The business rules will route documents based on accepted or rejected path, but the decision shape routes documents on a true or false path. The business rules is based on a comparison of multiple inputs and conditions, while the decision shape is based on a comparison of two specific values. The business rules can perform nested and or logic while the decision shape performs single Boolean logic. Built-in error message handling is included in the business rule shape where that is not included in the decision shape. In the business rules, inputs can consist of profile elements and functions, and in the decision shape, those inputs could be profile elements, document or process properties, SQL statements, stored procedures, or connector calls. The business rules shape is somewhat more complex to build, while the decision shape is relatively simple to configure.